Drowning is the leading cause of death for children one to four years old. But the good news is it can be prevented by following these safety tips. Children need constant supervision when in or around water, bath time included. Designate a water watcher dedicated to distraction-free supervision. A life jacket in the proper size should be worn by children who can't swim. Use childproof locks and door alarms on all doors leading to the pool area. Secure the pool area with a self-closing, self-latching gate. Keep toys and floating objects out of the pool. Pool alarms can be placed in the water for additional safety. Lastly, teach your children to swim. Check with your local recreation or aquatic center for swim lessons in your area. And check with your local fire department about CPR lessons. It could save a life. Visit Largo.com slash swim safety to learn more about free water safety kits and life jackets from Largo Fire Rescue. Welcome to our coffee chat. I'm going to see if I can get to the dashboard. There we go. I hope that you all are having a good day. Today's July 2nd. Um, it's our monthly coffee chat. Can you believe it's already July? It seems like uh, this year is flying by. We're halfway through it. Uh, so it is July 2nd. It's a busy week this week. We do have a city commission meeting tonight. Uh, it's a should be a you never know on these things, but it should be a relatively quick meeting. Um, we have a, a proclamation celebrating July as Parks and Recreation Month, so we'll hear a little bit more about all the cool stuff that's happened at Parks and Rec at the city, including summer camps that are jam packed around the city and um, and going really well. We also will be talking about uh, on the consent docket anyway, so uh, two lift stations that are being moved and raised out of um, uh, potential flooding areas. So, so they're able to, if there's a storm surge or a, or a particularly high tide, which we're seeing more of those, um, or a hurricane, that type of stuff, those lift stations are able to continue to function. And importantly, that means that your toilets are able to continue to flush. So. Um, those two lift stations, uh, we're getting a lot of, actually we're getting both state and federal money to help us pay for those lift stations, and, uh, but it's a total of about $10 million, so that's a lot of money, um, but it is important because it helps keep our community safe and functioning when all those things happen, and, and uh, it, is, it is hurricane season, there's a big hurricane out there right now, um, thankfully there's a it's a high pressure system sitting above it that's going to keep it below uh, Cuba and heading out to the to the west, the western Gulf of Mexico. Um, that's going to be later this week. So good morning, Georgia. Thank you for being here. I hope you're feeling well. Um, let me see. So those lift stations are uh, are on the consent docket. We also have the Southwest Pool, the award of bid for. Uh, Southwest Pool Reconstruction Project. Um, that project has been ongoing. It's actually um, American Rescue Plan Act money that's paying for the Southwest Rec um, pool project. And uh, it's exciting to have that underway. Um, that Southwest Rec pool was built um, about 30 years ago, I think. And um, this will, this will, you know, fix a lot of issues. It will modernize um, the bathhouse so that um, so that you know there's some separation between uh, people that are just using the restroom and the kids that are at the swim meet and that type of stuff. Uh, so it, it it'll be a lot of really good improvements at that pool. I believe I just looked at this. Good morning, Sue. Thanks for being here. Let me um, scroll. Down. I don't know why this is not getting pinned here. Um, sorry, I'm just uh, deleting a couple of my comments so I can see who's here. Um, so it's going to make the pool a lot better. Uh, we've been we've been waiting and anxiously uh, waiting to get that project started. Um, I think it starts this fall, uh, which will require the pool to be closed for some time. Um, they're talking about an entire calendar year, so that's going to cause some uh, some challenges for the swimming groups. There's a lot of people that swim in that pool, as well as dive at the pool. So 
the dive tower will be staying. It'll be refurbished and, and made to be like new. Uh, so that's going to be a great thing for the pool. There's going to be some hardships in the interim while, while we uh, work to reconstruct that pool. So I'll give you a specific date as soon as I know it, when that's going to be shut down. And I'll, I'll post that here on, the, uh, on my Facebook page. Um, let me see. The other, the other thing is we have a density bonus agreement um, in some areas of the city, our activity centers. Um, you are allowed to, developers are allowed to request for density bonuses based on a few things. And one of the ways that they can get density bonuses is, good morning, good morning, Carrie. I was looking at it and I, uh, gosh, sometimes I need to put my reading glasses on. But anyways, uh, good morning, neighbor. Good to see you. And uh, anyways, the density bonus, they can, they can um, request more units per acre based on allowing some units of their project to be held for income-based housing. And what that means is they, uh, they will set aside a certain percentage of their units and you have to, you, your maximum that you can make is either 120 or 80% in this case of average median income. And then your rents uh, will be based on your income. And that's based on a state scale. Uh, but if you make uh, X, your rent will be about 30% of that, or your, your housing cost. So they'll give you an actual number of what you can charge. Um, the, there's no ongoing subsidy from us or from the state or from anybody. It's just that, that, that uh, rental rate for that unit is kept at 30% of whatever the per person's making based on their income. So. It changes each year. Hopefully, um, people as people start making more, that might go up. It might even actually go down, depending on if they make a little bit less in a year. So uh, uh, it it helps keep those units affordable. I will say that at 120 um, AMI for like a one bedroom or a two bedroom, it still sounds like a striking, a, a pretty large number. Um, those 120 AMI is, is about 120% of AMI is, is about $70,000, $65,000 a year for an individual. So, so their rent is going to be really close to, or exactly what market rate is um, as rents go up and they've kind of stabilized, I think, here in the last, at least the last six months. But as rents go up, um, it'll protect those, those folks from it continuing to go up. So, Housing's tough, you know, and, and uh, so, but this, these density bonuses allow it to, to keep some units affordable for people that are working and uh, are, you know, trying to make ends meet. And with this bonus, it's, um, it stays on that property for 50 years. Those units will, will re remain affordable. So, or, you know, at least income based. And, let me see. So that's it for tonight's meeting, mostly. Um, the city facilities are closed on the 4th of July, which is two days from now. Um, so if you have trash and or recycling scheduled on Thursday, normally they come on Thursday, they will be at your house tomorrow, which is Wednesday. So if, you, um, if, your, Thursday, if your trash and or recycling day is Thursday, please put your cans out if they need to go out on Wednesday, otherwise you're going to be waiting until next week. Um, Friday schedule is unchanged, so residential Friday schedule the same as it is. Um, they'll be out picking up uh, recycling and trash if it's your scheduled day on Friday like normal. So other than that, the facilities are closed. We will be working though because we'll have fireworks over at Largo Central Park. Um, that event starts at six o'clock tomorrow night hopefully the rain ends at 5 30 um, just enough to cool it down a little bit uh, but there'll be a lot of fun things to do after six o'clock over at Largo Central Park um, it's free it's free to go uh, there is on-site parking and there's a cost to that uh, I think it's ten bucks for on-site parking if you park over at the high school I think they're charging five dollars uh, as a fundraiser over there uh, Largo Middle, you can park over there, and there's no fee for that, and walk down lo along the path to, to Central Park. Uh, you can park downtown. It's pretty, it's pretty um, 
it's a pretty close walk and there will be crosswalks or cr cross crossing guards uh, to help you get across safely and uh, but there's plenty of parking in the downtown just across the street from Largo Central Park that's what I do is generally I'll, I'll ride my bike over there or or walk from downtown um, it's um, it's a lot easier than trying to navigate the parking situation there's a lot of people that come to see the fireworks I've seen several reports around uh, independent reports around um, this year that say that these fireworks are the best in the county um, and I don't disagree the, the the thing that makes them so good is that they feel really close um, they're not shot out over the water or anything they they're they're lower than a lot of the fireworks and they feel really close um, it's pretty impressive if, if you're sensitive to loud noises but you still want to see the fireworks I would suggest getting a couple of those little earplugs because you know, there's some loud booms in those fireworks good morning Terry good to see you uh, so that's uh, the 4th of July come enjoy the fireworks go off right around 9 o'clock not exactly 9 o'clock but right around 9 o'clock so make sure you're over there um, I want to remind you that uh, this event at Largo Central Park, uh, there's some things that aren't allowed, including alcohol, coolers, pets. We don't want you having your dogs out there. Uh, there's a lot of people that come to see the fireworks, and uh, so we don't allow dogs for the 4th of July. Most other events are dog-friendly on leash, of course, uh, but not the 4th of July. You can't have any personal fireworks or or sparklers for I think obvious reasons uh, it's just not safe with that many people for the um, let me see uh, not professional but the uh, amateur fireworks users to be setting stuff off in the park where we don't allow that so this weekend is I know it's not it's like Tuesday but the weekend is coming up soon a lot of people have the 4th of July off and some people have Friday off even but then the weekend is train weekend at Largo Central Park the first weekend of each month uh, the, the railroad is running in in Largo Central Park so if you got a little one or or if you like to ride the train yourself uh, go take a couple spins around the train track at Largo Central Park and it's free they just like to get some donations to help pay for for um, for maintenance of the trains and the tracks um, it's all that's all volunteer too. The, the the folks that run that train track. A lot of great volunteers out there at Largo Central Park Railroad. So next week, some more events that are going on next week. Uh, this week, the Play Express is on a pause because of uh, it's a holiday week and the Fourth of July. They got a lot of stuff going on over at Parks and Rec, uh, but they'll be back in the parks next week. The Play Express will be at Eagle Lake Park on Tuesday morning from nine fifteen to eleven. That's at Eagle Lake Park, and then on Thursday over at Bonner Park on the southwest side of town at 9.15 to 11. That's on Thursday over at Bonner Park for the Play Express. The Play Express is just a, a complimentary, a free drop-in um, event for, for kids. Normally it's little kids, but they set up a, um, a bunch of things that they can do, some activities. Uh, there are some, some staff from our recreation department that kind of help, help manage that. But uh, there'll be a, there's a, we have a lot a pretty good following with the little kids that come out. Uh, just a good thing to uh, uh, some fun outdoor activities that doesn't cost anything for um, you don't you know anybody can come to that and it is uh, from about nine o'clock in the morning till eleven o'clock so a couple hours in the morning when it's not super hot. Um, but if that sounds too hot for you, uh, you could go to the Friday trivia at the community center which is nice and air-conditioned um, and that's at next that's I think it's next Friday it is next Friday at 630 over at the community center and if you want to be outside but not super hot um, the Highland Family Aquatic Center is open and uh, you know as you know it's the summer hours right now uh, but the summer hours are seven days a week and there's two time slots that we have the pool open for the public and that's 12.30 to 2.30 two hour slot and uh, 10 to noon so it's either 10 to noon or 12.30 to 2.30 you can certainly come out and go back and grab, you know, get a bite to eat and go back in at 
Um, parents really seem to like this because because they're not the bad guy that that tells them after a couple hours that it's time to go to go home. So so um, it's uh, really reasonable. It's only five bucks for a rec card holding member to come and use the Highland Family Aquatic Center. And that schedule, the summer schedule, is is like that is every day until August 11th after school starts back it, uh, it goes to weekends only so um, I just got an email I think yesterday or the day before with uh, the the brand new 2025 proposed budget it just dropped um, I read the um, I read the city managers report which is really just a summary I get into the I read that first and then kind of get into the weeds after that but uh, it's something that is a relatively quick read it uh, talks a little bit about about numbers and about trends, but it's um, it's a, a good introduction to the budget. And so I suggest for for people that are interested, but they really don't want to read a 250 page document, read that city manager's uh, message at the beginning of the of the budget. Um, and and then please, we're looking for feedback. There's a lot of different ways to. Um, to look at or to give us feedback, there's a uh, input. There's an online prioritization tool um, that I'll put a link in, in, on the site here, so you can take take that and participate. It takes about 10 minutes to do it, and it really staff presents the data from this online prioritization tool and all of the online citizens participation. Um, both to our finance advisory board as well as during the commission work session to help us better answer um, the needs for our, our residents. So, so please do that. There's also a couple drop-in um, events that you can stop by and ask questions about the budget and give inf give input as well. And they're going to be at the library on Saturday, July 13th, from 10 until noon, um, and also Thursday. July 17th in the afternoon from 2 to 4. So if you if you um, would prefer to come and ask some people some specific questions about the budget or get information in person, those are a great opportunity. That's July 13th on a Saturday, 10 to noon, or the 17th, which is a Thursday in the afternoon, 2 to 4. So uh, let me see, what else? Pre-qualifying is underway. As you probably know, there's an election coming up uh, in November. Um, a city election in November, and um, we have the mayor seat, seat three, and seat four are all up are all up for election, um, and we are in what's called I call it pre qualifying. I'm not even sure if that's exactly what it's called, but it's a period of time that you can work on um, getting petition cards from voters. Uh, in Largo, you have to get to qualify for uh, to run. You have to get two hundred. Um, legitimate authorized petition cards from from Largo voters so uh, it takes a little bit of time and it really helps get you in front of voters and talk to people and it's uh, I enjoy it um, but that's going on right now qualifying begins on 718 so the eight, about two weeks from now on the 18th of July and then it's gonna it'll be a two-week period of qualifying Qualifying ends on August 1st, so that's I think that's the last day of qualifying. Um, there are, as I said, the mayor seat. So um, right now, I'm going to knock on wood, but right now um, I'm the only one running for that uh, particular seat. And then uh, we have seat three. I'm going to put my glasses on so I can read names. Uh, there's Michael DeBreezy and Timmy Garten are both uh, signed up to run for that seat. That's um, Commissioner Eric Gerard. Um, decided not to run for re-election in that seat. Um, he's done a great job, and I think uh, I think he's excited to travel a little bit more and, and not be tied down quite as much. So so um, so Michael DeBreezy and Timmy Garten. So if you see any of these folks out with, uh, I wish I had a card, but out with a petition card, it takes about five seconds, and it it really just helps them get get on the ballot. It doesn't say that you're going to vote for them or send them money or anything like that. Uh, but it helps them get on the ballot, and it helps you you get to meet somebody that's uh, running to represent you at the city commission. Um, at seat four, uh, we have Jamie Robinson, who he's the incumbent. He's been there for a little while, does a great job. Um, and then 
uh, Le Leon Katarzy Katarzyna, I think is that how, how you pronounce it, Leon Katarzyna, uh, and then John Lauser. And uh, so the three of them are running for seat four. The Chamber of Commerce plans to have a candidate forum after qualifying. Sometimes um, people sign up to run and then they don't complete the qualifying. So, so um, they'll have a candidate forum after qualifying ends and invite all the people that are running for opposed seats in the city. And, and that's, they usually host that at the commission chambers at Largo City Hall. Um, and it's really well done. Uh, the chamber puts that on, and Dan Flynn, uh, State Farm Agent Dan Flynn, um, is usually the moderator of that. And, and I, I, I have seen, actually, the, I think the moderators I've seen recently have done, we're, we're fine. Um, but he does a great job, so I was going to, I was going to uh, pick on moderators there, but I think they did fine. Um, let me see. And that's about it. I encourage you to look at the budget. I'll put a link here. Take a look at the budget. Just read that manager's report, and if you've got any questions, feel free to reach out to me. Send them in to the commission um, as a whole. If you have some input, we'd like you to take that online thing or come to one of those in-person things, or just send an email if you've got some input. Um, stay safe over the 4th of July. Um, if you're traveling, if you're staying here, also stay safe. Uh, be careful if you've got fireworks you're setting off or or, or whatever, but um, hope that you have a wonderful 4th of July celebrating our Independence Day, and I will see you soon. Thank you for being here. Hello, I'm Megan, and I'm so glad you're here. It's a beautiful day in Largo, where the city has been committed to building the community of choice in Tampa Bay by focusing on sustainability, public health and safety, and community pride. There's been a lot to see in 2023, and today I want to give you just a glimpse of what's being done to build the community and what's on the horizon. Let's start with what Largo's doing to address one of Pinellas County's greatest needs, which is housing and its impact on building a sustainable community. I'm at First Avenue Northeast, where as you can see, a new home is under construction. In addition to representing the hope of home ownership for a first time home buyer, this home is also a story of collaboration and community partnerships. So Largo is addressing the need for more affordable housing by modifying development codes and partnering, partnering with developers and nonprofits. So we are working with a nonprofit, it's Suncoast Housing Connections, and they actually are building it as their own home. Uh, so that way the homeowner, when they move in, the utility cost will not be as high. Adding on all of the sustainability, the solar, the extra insulation, the uh, on-demand hot water heater, and other things like that, we're able to eliminate, for the most part, all of the utility costs for the home buyer. Largo is also working with developers and teaming up with other community partners as well. Grand Oaks is a new apartment complex on Clearwater Largo Road with mixed housing for affordable and market rate units. We also have a partnership with Catholic Charities where a new home was just built for a family exiting homelessness. Seminole Square is another partnership with Pinellas County, Pinellas County Housing Authority, City of Largo, and private investors. Suncoast Housing Connections hopes the home will be ready for its first owner by fall of 23. Now, other investments in Largo's commitment to sustainability and resilience this year include increasing Largo's fleet of electric vehicles, modernizing operational software, and expanding the Largo Public Library's home delivery service. Another area that Largo has been making strides is pursuing financial sustainability and public safety by seeking grant funding to accomplish key projects. Now I'm at the Largo Police Department where officers are now equipped with body-worn video cameras thanks in part to a federal appropriation grant that is sharing the cost of this potentially life-saving technology. Body-worn cameras are standard equipment for police um, in 2023. Uh, this project really was a major step forward uh, for Largo PD. We were able to secure a competitive federal grant as well as a federal earmark. It allowed us to, to accomplish the project sooner, um, allowed us to buy more cameras up front, and allowed us to implement the project um, a little bit faster. 
Body worn cameras have been beneficial to officers to help us document the environments that we go into and the conditions that we encounter residents in. In addition to the police body cameras competitive grant and federal earmark, the city has also secured federal funding for the Largo Public Library Solar Project and state funding towards a new restroom facility at Largo Central Park. Largo is also pursuing additional earmark and grant funding opportunities. Pending grant applications for other important projects include the replacement of the McGow Nature Park Boardwalk, the relocation and elevation of three wastewater lift stations, installation of electric vehicle charging stations at all public city facilities, and new equipment for Largo Fire Rescue. Another investment this year in public safety includes increased staffing at Station 41, which has provided a dedicated medic unit to administer advanced life support by a non-transport capable unit. Largo also takes great community pride in its parks, green spaces, and natural ecosystem. Largo's network of over 50 ponds helps preserve the environment and protect our local waterways. Many investments have also been made this year in Largo's stormwater infrastructure. All the sedimentation, um, toxins, things that go over uh, impervious surfaces into our stormwater system will end up in a pond. The pond will then uh, allow for the sedimentation to drop to the bottom of the pond, filter out some of the impurities, make that water a little cleaner, and then at some point send it back into the system downstream. A few notable investments into a more proactive streets and stormwater system include a pavement preservation program and interactive map to assist with pavement planning. With, with a better structure of identified issues, Largo will be better equipped to maintain our stormwater system. This will ensure that our waterways are maintained and we're doing our part to not only protect our citizens, but also the environment. Uh, to, to ensure that our ponds and our, our channels are as clean as they can be, as visually appealing as they can be. So as you can see, it's been an eventful 2023. And in some ways, Largo's just getting started. Budget priorities in 2024 include investments in serving those experiencing homelessness and continuing to focus on team members who build the community of choice. Largo also has its sights set on a vibrant downtown. Several new downtown additions are in the works right now, including a mixed-use project in the development review process called The Station, the Skyview Townhomes, which are currently under construction, and Horizon West Bay, Largo's new downtown city hall complex. This unique mixed-use project will be LEED certified, add a parking garage to downtown, and host 18,000 square feet of retail space to attract destination restaurants, nightlife, and local retail to Largo's downtown district. So stay connected to the future of Downtown Largo and Horizon West Bay at downtownlargo.com. And you can stay connected to the future of Largo's budget and get involved in the process by visiting largo.com slash budget.